Okay. Welcome everybody to another Pepperstone Learn It Live webinar, um, daily a week, two weekly event. Uh, my name is Thomas Atkinson. I'm joined as always by Tyra Annabella. Hi everyone. Yeah, and welcome to tonight's uh, webinar on stop loss and take profit zones. Probably one of the most important things that you could actually learn as a trader, but probably one of the most ignored. So it'd be good to actually get through some of these things and show you some of the basics on getting the positions in the correct area most of the time. Yes, unfortunately, some people do find, I guess, placing stop losses a little bit uh, a boring or not a great topic, but it is one of the most important and actually one of the hardest. So we'll talk about that tonight. Okay, just to get started, we want to go through a risk warning. Obviously, the information provided in tonight's webinar has been produced by a third party and does not reflect the opinion of Pepperstone and the information has been provided without any alteration or verification and should be considered only general in nature. Okay, so let's go through a few of the things that we're going to be covering today. So one of them is we're going to be looking at where to place stops based on price action. Now have a look at a few different patterns that help us do that. We'll also be taking a look at support resistance in general and what we can learn from support resistance about where to place stop losses and even swings in the market and Fibonacci and where we can place stop losses due to those things. We'll be taking a look at a couple of examples in the live market and then we'll be looking at setting take profit targets also based on things like pattern analysis and supply demand zones or support resistance zones. And then to finish off, we'll look at five tips that will help you better an analyze the charts. And these are pretty important tips, often overlooked by scalpers in particular. I find that when we, when most people first start into a market, let's say it's what well, it could be anything, it could be Australian US dollar trading or Euro US dollar trading, generally in Forex, we have a tendency to go the 15 minute and five minute charts to start with. And we ignore the larger time frames and we ignore what some of the bigger bankers and the big traders are doing. And they often push those smaller time frames as well. So while we might be scalping on a five minute or 15 minute chart, we often overlook the overall daily prevailing trend. And therefore, it kind of punishes us. And I think that's something that happened to us, isn't it, Ty, when we first started? We, we didn't pay enough attention to the bigger time frames. Yeah, and you will get whipsawed and um, and really punished if you don't do that. So, but you, look, part of uh, any strategy is actually really making sure that you're covering the different time frames. But we will go into a little bit more of that um, throughout the webinar. But it is yeah, vitally important part of trading successfully. All right. So step one, or one of the most important things to really figuring out before we even do something like figure out where our stop loss and take profit is going to be, is we want to know the market conditions. So we really want to know. Is the market range bound or trending on the larger time frames? It's very important for us to learn this, and then we can create a bias from that, which we can use on our potentially smaller time frames. So we're aware that, of course, a lot of people love 5, 15, 30 minute, and one hour time frames because you get a lot of opportunity. And often, if you're somebody that works during the day, you might want to come home, spend two to three hours in front of the charts, maybe four hours. Some of us uh, go a little bit too late and then wake up the next morning a bit tired. Um, yeah. But we want to be spending some time in front of the charts and potentially get some opportunities because it feels good to get into the market. And uh, the unfortunate side effect of that is we often don't really think about the whole story. We only think about, okay, I'm going to enter here and I hope it goes in this direction because it looks like it is at the moment. We don't consider where's the next resistance or support line. Where should my stop loss be? Does this trade make risk reward sense? It's, it's something we all do, isn't it, Ty? But it's something that we need to uh, get on top of pretty early or you're setting yourself up for some problems later on. Yeah, most definitely. And look, we've seen many good strategies that people have come to us with come undone purely because they weren't able to, you know, handle their stop loss and take profit zones. Now, be that because they were too close or they weren't taking into consideration what the prevailing market was doing or what stop um, yeah, support and resistances were in place at the time. So... There are a couple of very um, small hacks, I guess you could call them, uh, seems to be the, the buzzword at the moment, where you know you can really uh, put a lot of uh, you know, support behind where a stop loss can be, and also to give you a take profits, a lot of uh, you know, good opportunities to actually work out without a lot of resistance. So we're going to go through some of those tonight, uh, because you will find that even um, an average strategy will actually improve if you put your uh, if you put your stop loss and take profit zones in the right area. Now I know that might sound simple, and you might think, well, how you know, how how is that possible? But actually 
yeah, they're two of the most important things you can do when you yeah, place a trade, but they're the most ignored thing I've found in, in all of our experience coaching people that they are generally ignored. In fact, so many times, and, and Thomas will attest to this, people don't even think about a stop loss or a take profit until they've well and truly entered the trade and, yeah, basically letting it play out, which uh, strikes me as amazing because I'm not really sure how you can even manage risk uh, or your risk ratios um, when you do that, but it's amazing how many people actually do. So, yeah, tonight is all about actually pinpointing the right areas and, yeah, trying to make the trades work for you rather than, you know, guessing checking. So before you can really go down the line of, of pinpointing, I guess, those those opportunities, you also need to learn or spend some time learning the way the market moves. Now, this goes for a particular currency as well. What we generally suggest is if you are a newer trader out there, you pick, I guess, a few different of the major currencies, things like maybe odd US dollar, euro US dollar, pound US dollar, maybe a euro yen, those kind of things, very major or major cross pairs. And you learn the way that they work or they trade during certain periods of time. So it just makes sense. If you are trading, let's say the euro US dollar, some of the highest activity on the euro US dollar is going to be around the London Open or the European Open and the US Open, because that makes sense for that, that particular pair. Now with something like the US dollar yen, you're actually going to see quite a lot of action and quite a lot of pip movement around the Tokyo Open. And then you'll also see it around the US Open, et cetera. So pick, I guess, a few currencies, learn how they trade. It's really important to watch opens. If you haven't done it, or you've never seen, let's say a non-farm payroll um, a release in the US, I really think people should watch that. I mean, I've learned a lot about volatility, a lot about the things that can go wrong and the things that can go potentially right uh, off watching big, massive news events and opens. And, it, and a lot of our trading knowledge, especially from the scalping side, Ty, it was really built on hundreds of London opens. Yeah. that's the great one for Australian really traders. Yeah, true. I think you really do need to understand the mechanics of what the market does at key points uh, throughout the day and just as importantly around news. So I think you need to know yeah, what the market is actually capable of. So I think a lot of people go into a little bit of denial actually as to you know, what can and can't go wrong in the market. And there's no better lesson to be learned than yeah, you know, watching a non-farm payrolls or in an aggressive London Open to see what the market actually truly is capable of. It's almost like um, the market can be a little bit like Mother Nature. People seem to underestimate what Mother Nature can do in terms of you know, storms and um, you know, the events that they can do. The market can be a little bit the same if you, you know, I guess, don't give it the respect that it deserves. Because it really is a, a respect thing with the market. And a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking they can control it or they do understand it. Um, look, that may you, you may have an understanding of it, but you will never uh, completely understand that and you certainly will never control it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, much like um, weather patterns and mother nature, uh, you, you have to respect it and actually understand the patterns of its behavior. And there's no better way to do that than actually watching the, the aggression that can happen in some of these events because it can give you an appreciation of what it is capable of. So you can work with it rather than um, it you know, go against you. And it's a massive learning experience because when you understand what can happen, then you understand the importance of stop losses. They're not sexy and they're not cool and fun, but it's important to have them and you can see what can go wrong. And that's always such an important lesson. And unfortunately, most traders learn it the hard way and they've, they've got to go down a, um, a bit of a bit of a pain, painful kind of journey if they if they don't learn it uh, early from that aspect. So we've got here just a couple of moving averages and these ones are just EMAs, but we like 20 SMA as well, 50 SMA and 200 SMA. Um, and you can have them on things like the daily, the four hour, the one hour, of course, it goes across all of the different uh, timeframes. But what you'll often notice is that when something is trending, it likes to come back and it likes to really test the 20, let's say SMA or the 50 SMA. And it uses that as like a dynamic support or resistance level. And it can often be a really good place to either trail a stop down. Uh, if you already have a position, let's say we were shorting the Euro US dollar here and we had our stop trailing behind that 50 SMA, there's a lot of pips there before it eventually does cross above. And that's because it was mostly, we could recognize early, it was following that 20 SMA with very small pullbacks into the 50, once here and once here. So 
something always interesting to look at is these moving averages as a way of looking, I guess, at swings in the market during a trend and where you might be able to place potential stop losses as well. Do you have anything else to say on the moving averages, Ty? Yeah, and I think it's probably, it's important to actually use the two, like, you know, we've got a few different ones on the screen at the moment, but it's actually really important not to, and, and this is about giving the, the stop losses the room as well. A lot of people generally use a moving average as a stop loss, but they put the stop loss right on it. Now, you've got to appreciate that uh, if you are using a moving average as a stop loss, it needs to be the right moving average because if you're using uh, pullbacks on the 20, for instance, on nearly you know, most of these moves, you'll see that the um, the 20, which is a red line, does get breached. And even though price is you know, respecting it a lot of the time, it does actually um, break on through and sometimes touch the, the 50, which is you know, considered probably the the better one for the stop loss. Now, again, that doesn't mean that you put the stop loss right on the 50. There needs to be like a percentage base uh, raised off that level. And that's why it's really, really important. You can see here, like even on the, the downward spiral, we can see that it got very, very close to the to the moving average, uh, the red one, uh, several times. And most of the time there, you would have been quite safe actually just trading off that. And if you had to put your stop loss behind the blue line, you can see only once would you have been stopped out. Now, Look, obviously, sometimes you're going to get this spike movement where it is going to come and stop you out and continue on, which it did here. But if you were trading all of these opportunities, you've been given about seven chances to get into this trade and write it down quite aggressively for only one that actually came out and stopped you out. So assuming that all of these trades would have been at least one to one or, or two to one at worst... Um, you would have had a very, very good track record on this move on the on the four hour. You would have had a very, very good couple of days, and that happens a lot. So it's really, really important to give um, the stop loss the room that it deserves. And a 50 moving average is, is generally a really, really good guide. So here we have quite an aggressive move by the pound yen on the daily here over the last couple of weeks. But I wanted to deep dive into this because the reason we're talking about moving averages of potential stop loss or potential trailing stop loss for you is that when you see let's say a bigger pattern on a larger time frame like we see here with this descending triangle that broke perfectly two-thirds of the way through which we love don't we Ty um, when that break did happen you can say okay a few things about that one with patterns we can actually say okay well let's let's have a look at what we expect out of this pattern so we expect around two-thirds of the length of the pattern and that is what our expected take profit is. You can see it's gone a little bit further than that, but this is a very, a higher kind of likelihood. You'll also notice that for some not unknown reason, that was where there was some support and we saw some buyers coming in. So you always know that when you're looking at a market, it does this kind of thing, nice big sell off, comes down tests and then has a big rebound. Even if it keeps going after that, you know that you were correctly identifying a level and you should no matter what take that away and be very comfortable and very happy with your analysis and way too many traders always look at it and they say oh my take profit was you know I could have got more out of this trade look at the price action if it stops there hesitates has a few candles after where it thinks about it and then it moves more in that direction there could be other reasons for that, but you have correctly identified the market. So I really want to point that out. Do not blame yourself for not getting enough what you perceive take profit because when you see this type of movement in the market, you see this consolidation or rejection, at least initially, you can be sure that that was a very good placement of a take profit and never, ever, ever um, be unhappy with that because you've done a great job. Yeah, you're never going to extricate every single pip out of the market. And that's actually not the, not the aim of a trader. It really isn't. Like a lot of people seem to think that they need to capture every pip of a move to be a successful trade. That's actually not the case at all. Uh, all you have to really focus on is to make sure that you, your risk to reward ratio, which is you know your stop loss level distance versus your take profit distance, is always a positive number. At least we like to stick to the one-to-one -one as, a, as a minimum. But it needs to be one-to-one -one or better and yeah, you know, you've correctly analyzed and traded properly. If you're going for, you know, under that, like say one to half a, a, a reward, then the problem with that, and a lot of scalpers do actually trade this way, is that your, your strike rate or your win ratio has to be extremely high to actually be in front, you know, at the end of the, the trading period. So, you know, it, it's almost a, yeah, one step 
forward, two steps back approach in that regard. You've got to be right a lot of the time. So you've got to be very, very confident in your system. Uh, it's not to say that you can't be successful doing that if you're a very good scalper, but in in our experience, it's the it's the traders who actually go for the bigger take profits um, at, at at least a one to one risk ratio. And by that I mean, for anybody who doesn't understand what I'm talking about, um, if you've got a stop loss based on pips, for instance, and it's like a, a 30 pip stop loss, yeah, you'd want to be taking at least a 30 pip uh, take profit as the reward to make that a one to one trade. Now, if it was a, a 30 pip stop loss and a 60 pip take profit, that's a two to one. That's what we call a two to one. And what I mean by a, a, a one to half is basically having a stop loss of 30 pips and a take profit of 15. Uh, that's what a, a one to half would be. So obviously not ideal because, I mean, you can have two wins in a row and you can give that all back basically uh, after one trade. So that's not what we want. We want to be going the other way where, you know, we can get two to one and three to one trades. And most swing, most good swing trading uh, systems and traders generally get two to three to one on their trades. That gives you a very, very good strike rate. And you can be right even half the time and still be well in front. So the reason I want to highlight this is we can see this larger descending triangle. We can see the break happened. We can see where traditionally we place our stop loss, which by the rules of a pattern like this, we should be placing behind that last swing would be a conservative kind of area. But then what do we do from that point? A lot of traders, they don't want to necessarily say, oh, I've got a stop loss up here and I hold that stop loss in all the way down to the bottom. So the reason we say that moving average is let's go back down. Now we expect when it breaks, for it to be an aggressive move. It should be an aggressive move. The break has happened. We might see potentially a bit of a swing back where it comes back and it retests it. But so let's say it broke, came back, retested, and then starts making its way down. What if we used this 50 moving average as a way of us following it? And on top of that, we could even use the swings as new lows are made. So here we might start and say, okay, well, initially our stop loss is up here. Then we've got the moving average breaks. That's that's good. It doesn't do the retest. It comes, keeps going down, makes a new low. What is stopping us from being able to move our stop loss behind the last swing? The price action is telling us that the market has made a new low. So when this market makes a new low here, the price action is saying, it didn't even bother coming back and retesting like we would expect it to. What it is doing is it's continuing on towards our full take profit zone. So as it makes that new low, potentially we could maybe lock in a bit of profit here. We could say, okay, we got in maybe at this zone, let's lock in some profit, move our stop loss to a percentage behind the last swing. When the new low is formed, percentage behind the last swing and so on and so forth. So it's actually a very powerful technique when you're trying to follow. And we get this asked this question all the time, how do I follow and start locking in profit? Do I use a trailing stop loss? We don't recommend trailing stop losses because they're more of a you know point-based thing. You might say 50, 50 point pip trailing stop loss. That's gonna get you stopped out by things like wicks and big pullbacks. You might go bang, bang, stop you out and then keep going. Whereas when you're following the market, you, you were able to actually market 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 adaptive. You're actually dynamically following the market, whereas a static um, trailing stop is it is not dynamic at all. All it's based on is basically a, um, a level of points that you've set it at. When if you're using your moving average, like we've just alluded to, as your roll down, you're basically making your trade. It's still a trailing stop, but it's actually a manual one that you're dynamically applying to the market. So if the market is, is selling off aggressively, like we can see it has done here, yeah, your stop loss is being moved down according to the aggression of that drop. Now, if you were using only a points-based system, it can be knocked out very, very quickly, especially in a market that's not moving down uh, aggressively. And there's nothing worse than getting stopped out and it, by a trailing stop and then seeing the market can just continue on, you know, four or five times further than, and probably where you expected it to go in the first place, just by having, yeah, a fixed a static type of uh, trading stop loss. So ideally, if you do use a moving average to continue to roll down your stop, uh, you're keeping it market adaptive and the more aggressive the market will be, yeah, you know, I guess generally the more accurate your stop loss will be as well. So the moving averages are so useful for this sort of thing. So you yeah, pay a lot of attention to the 20s and the 50s because they are very, very useful in a and trend. These and these are 20s and 50s, by the way. Yes. And, and look, the, and the good thing about the moving averages is not only does it uh, provide a great level to have uh, stop loss uh, levels to trail it down, but it also gives you, like we said earlier, 
uh, a really good opportunity to to join the trend. Probably one of the most yeah, that that would prove probably be one of the biggest questions we get asked probably on a daily basis. Um, how do you know when to join a trend, or how do you know when a trend is over? Well, you know, like we said, we're going to probably touch on it uh, very shortly. When we start looking at the bigger time frames, they are usually the first clue that a trend could be running its course. Now, now by that we mean we can see that we've got an aggressive trend, um, you know, going down here. Now it's come back and retested this level. If we draw. Um, basically where price is right now. If we draw a line, we can see that that was an area of previous support. Now, yes, it did break through, uh, but it's come back now and retested it. So, yeah, there is a chance that, yeah, this, although this trend may not be completely over, um, it's certainly going to have a bit more trouble getting through. Um, it's now starting to print a series of, you know, higher lows and higher highs. So we're getting price action as the confirmation that the trend could be turning around. But until we have that confirmation, there's no reason to think that a trend is going to stop. A little bit like I said earlier, we can't control the market. All we can do is work with it. And to work with it, we want as much information and evidence as possible from all of the different timeframes that are relevant to our trade uh, to give us those clues. So here we've just got the New Zealand CAD. So I want to point on this one because there's a few things again going on here. Um, a few things that have gone on in the past as well, and this is why it's so important to to learn your your patterns. So I'll actually bring some patterns on the on the screen here. This is actually one of our like kind of little cheat sheet, I guess we've made. And if you're interested in getting access to this cheat sheet, uh, you're welcome to email us at support at fxevolution.com, and we'll send you a copy for free. That's fine. Uh, but this just shows some of the common patterns that we like to use. So you've got things like uh, as we said before, the descending triangle. We've also got inverse head and shoulders, double bottoms, double tops, that kind of thing. So say the inverse head and shoulder. It's a really good example of how to, I guess, analyze maybe the end of a trend and the start of another trend. And here we have over this left-hand side, we've got that left shoulder, we've got that head, and we've got that right shoulder. And then we've got the break of the neckline happening somewhere around here. It'll be a little bit on the angle, this one. So when that break does happen, what we can do is we can potentially buy the market here. We can say that could be the end of the trend. We also know that potentially only a few candles after this, it did cross, so that'd be actually extra confirmation. But when we do that, we know that our stop loss should technically be under the right shoulder. That's what the pattern is telling us. And that's the beauty of pattern analysis. Where should I take profit be? A take profit should always be the length of the head to the neckline. So we take that, work that out, and it's no secret that that's where the market has stopped. Yes, it wicked through, but notice how the market stopped here for a few candles, came down, and then went back up for a little bit more and ended up testing this resistance. This would have been a very good take profit level. And you should be very proud if you took a take profit there because that would be correct to the pattern, correct to the reversal, correct to everything. Now, if you were someone that said, when this happens, I think it's going to go 800 pips, for whatever reason, because this could be also a four hour or one hour or whatever, um, then you're being unrealistic and not reading what the market's telling you. The market's saying these are the easy pips, potentially up to here is maybe a little bit extra pips, but it is going to find a lot of resistance at its previous resistance area. And it has done so. And now it's on the, the sell side and it's coming back down. So when you recognize these opportunities, very, very beneficial to you. Yeah. It's really, really important to understand you know what the pattern is trying to say now most of the people who who try to um basically take take, take the piss out of technical analysis and say you know it doesn't work really don't understand why technical analysis is actually there in the first place because really uh price action in technical analysis is telling us what's happening in the market it's it's actually a very very good clue but what a lot of people don't do is they don't actually pick the right patterns in the right areas or they pick and choose which ones they think are going to be correct Trading like many uh, forms of, you know, I guess generating income, just like business in general, is keeping on betting, following the same rules, following the same systems, and having a system that you know, if you follow in the long run, will generate more uh, profit than loss. Your winners will be bigger than your losers, and you'll win more than you'll lose. Now, what the worst thing that you can do is actually have a winning system or a system that generally works out um, most of the time, but lose faith because you have two or three in a row that you may not have uh, gone right or, or it just may have turned on you. You're not going to get every single trade right. I can't emphasize that enough that um, you will not get every single trade right. 
but that doesn't mean that you abandon yeah what could potentially be quite a good system it's it's the repetition that makes technical analysis work it's history repeating itself and that's why patterns like those inverse head and shoulders and you know double tops and double bottoms it's all about identifying them in the correct areas and using price action to really confirm them which makes them uh, so powerful but you know the one thing i will say about the technical analysis patterns is and it's right on topic for what we're talking about tonight is they are the easiest way to get the stop loss and take profit levels right because they all come with their own predetermined uh, areas to go for the tried and true that have worked for many many years so if anybody um yeah like we saw on the cheat sheet before anybody who wants it um you're happy to give it to you just send us a, an email and we'll send it through because it's a really really good way if you um we, we trade these patterns every single day in the stock market, in the currency markets, indices. They happen everywhere in every time frame. They can't be underestimated and they are often the easiest way to trade. And just as importantly, the easiest way to put the right stop loss and take profit levels in the correct areas every single time. So here we've got a channeling market. Many people will be aware of that. Also, uh, you would know this kind of pattern as well. It's a very common pattern. Now, traditionally, what you'd do is you would buy if the break happened to the upside and it confirmed and closed, and you would place your stop loss underneath uh, the lows down here. And then, of course, you'd be looking for your take profit being the range. So that's the range of uh, the initial channel would then make your take profit. Now, there are a couple of little kind of hacks, I guess, you can do here. Now, as we saw before with the market, if we have a bit of a swing going on or some moving averages on the way out, mostly with channels you want swings. Let's say on the upside here, before it broke, it had a really nice defined swing. What you could do is on the break, you could actually say, well, this is very clear. A lot of people are going to see this. And yes, okay, it's going to be slightly lower probability than the stop loss, the correct stop loss that's down here. But you might be able to place the stop loss underneath this swing instead. And by doing that, you obviously have a smaller stop loss, which means a larger uh, take profit proportionally. Now, it's really important that when you do see this swing, you want to start checking that with things. Check that with maybe a Fibonacci overlay. Check that with, are there any other things that are around this kind of swing? Is this swing clear? Is this swing there? It's not always written because it's not actually of the technical way of trading a channel but we've found and it is does work quite well is if you do see a very nice profound kind of maybe uh, sometimes you see like a flag pattern happening before the break this is a very good place to place that stop loss and you definitely get a higher risk reward kind of scenario so something to think about there's trades and things to do inside of the patterns um, so that's something that i definitely would recommend you start to work on as well it probably brings us on to the now that we mentioned that we probably it's probably a good time to bring it up actually now one of the advantages of actually i'll, I'll put this to the room um can anyone tell me yeah you know, what the biggest advantage of having a, a stop loss in the right place versus one that is miles away um what advantage of that is going to be for the trader like where is it where is the advantage there can anyone answer that it's it's one of the most important things. It's probably one of the, the things that most people get wrong. But um, okay, so the advantage is, uh, just for those of you who have not been able to answer it, the closer your stop loss is to your entry point, the better the risk reward ratio is. So People make the mistake very, very uh, early on in their trading careers, and it's usually the um, the death of their trading careers, where they decide in their mind how much they stand to lose on a trade, and they adopt uh, they adapt their stop loss mm. to that level. Now, what they'll do is they'll decide that they're going to risk $100 uh, per trade. They might have a $10,000 account, and they're only going to risk 1%, which is the rule that everybody abides by. You'll, um, you'll see it everywhere. That's what they want to do. So what they'll do, rather than actually putting your stop loss where the stop loss is, needs to be, whether that's behind the swing or whether it's behind the pattern, like we discussed earlier, they'll just work out where the stop loss needs to be relative to losing $100, okay? Now, now that could mean that the stop loss is going to be far too close to the entry point and it's going to get stopped out prematurely purely because it just wasn't in the right place in the first place. This is the biggest mistake that uh, trading uh, people make when they first start out they put their stop losses far too close to where it needs to be. Primarily because 
they're trying to adjust their, their stop loss level to the dollar amount they want to risk rather than the other way around. What you want to be doing at all times is actually working out where your stop loss needs to be. Uh, now, be that at the bottom of a pattern or behind a support or resistance zone, and then working out the appropriate contract size so you lose the right amount of money if that trade goes wrong. So if your $100 is basic, if you're trading, say, a standard uh, Euro USD, generally it's around about $10, $11 a pip. Uh, if you've only got $100 as your stop loss, you're going to need probably only a 10 pip stop loss. But if you require a uh, you know, a 40 pip stop loss, instead of trading a full contract size, you need to trade a 0.25. That'll give you your 40 pips that you need. You're still only risking $100. Uh, that is the biggest mistake people make. They'll just put in the 10 pip stop loss because they think $100 is the right level to lose if they're going to lose it, and they'll put a standard contract on. The contract must be adjusted to the stop loss, and that is why it's really, really vital to know exactly where your stop loss is going to be prior to actually placing the trade, because it's the only way that you can truly manage risk. It, it's crazy how many people make that mistake. I'd say I'd say it's a massive percentage of traders out there. And uh, it's really unfortunate that they don't ever get past that point. So here we've got a double bottom uh, pattern. And in this case, the, the market has obviously um, found a bottom, found support. It's come back, found support again, it's broken through that intervening uh, um, peak here. And when that's happened, we because we know a double bottom pattern is the idea of the end of a trend and the start of a new trend, is we have an area where we can place our stop loss and again, our area where we can place our take profit. Now, because a pattern is telling us to do this kind of thing and where to place it, that's excellent. We already know exactly where, where they can be. But let's have a look at one in the market because one happened recently and this is the euro pound uh, daily. So you can see here we've got the euro pound, we've got that bottom happening here, and then we have where we expect it to go. So you'll notice, oh, I'll actually bring this up slightly. There we go. So that's where we expect it to go, and it's very close, if not you know, 80% of the way there, which is often what we like to do with our take profits. We like to take them a little bit earlier just to make sure that we get a higher probability of success. So here it's broken through that, that trough. It's found it at the same time as it breaks through. We've got that cross of that 2050 on the daily slight um, after. Now this could be a five minute, 15 minute, one hour, four hour weekly chart, doesn't really matter. It's the same principle. The end of the trend has happened and the start of the new trend is what should be happening here. And you can see that it very quickly busted through that 200 daily, which is often a very, very, very powerful moving average. So that's the power of a pattern coming into it and also the end of potentially that trend based on the price action that we saw down here. So Ty, do you want to talk about why this is a pretty important double bottom pattern for everybody? Okay, sure. So this double bottom is known as an Eve Adam double bottom. So the the component of an Adam and Eve double bottom is generally when the, the base of one of the troughs is considerably wide like this one is now, we must be mindful this is a daily chart that we're looking at. So every one of these candles represents a full day. So we can see here on the first trough that we've got a period of about, well, it's got to be at least probably three weeks worth of uh, price action around this zone. And then the second time it's, it's had that reaction to go up. And then the second time it's come down, which makes a second trough, we can see our, our second highlighted area here. It's basically gone down and rejected uh, nearly half of its length in two or three daily candles. So what that means is that it, that support level at the bottom of this double bottom is very, very strong because it withheld about three weeks worth of movement with price trying to get down and break the, the lower end. Then it's gone up, came back and retested it, but it's rejected extremely sharply. And what that generally does, uh, an Eve Adam double bottom generally re reacts very, very aggressively and does completely blow out like this one does in a very aggressive manner. So what we want to be seeing uh, when we see this particular order for a double bottom, and it goes for a double top as well, when the when the um, the first peak is uh, over several periods, you know, over a week or two of daily action, and then only one or two candles reverses the next touch, you can generally expect that when the neckline does get broken, uh, it's going to be a very aggressive move. And you can see here that um, it moved very aggressively. Even uh, it, Well, it happened before the moving averages crossed over, but you know anybody who is astutely aware of this double uh, bottom with the Eve Adam setup 
would have been you know long very very early in this one because this happens amazingly well most of the time and so there's little nuances to traders trading it's not just about the fact that it's a double bottom or a double top pattern it's understanding the price action behind it when you understand the price action behind it and then you see things like the moving averages cross after the close has happened and after the aggression comes through, you can have more confidence in that trade. You can start to potentially say, okay, well, I'm confident in what's happening right now. Let's jump down to the time frame underneath and start using some dynamic potentially support. So a 50 is a very popular dynamic support. And you can see even with that big wick pullback, um, the 50 holds and you could be potentially just like, you know, following this nice aggressive trend, you know it should be aggressive, and Adam Eve double bottom is telling you it should be aggressive. So why not use the moving average to kind of trail the trade a little bit? And right now we're seeing that consolidation potentially breaks above, gets to that full take profit, be really really nice, um, or it, it you know it's going to consolidate here and, and it'll move on to whatever it does. It's basically reached 80% of what we expect already. And I think this is actually a really nice example of what we were talking about earlier, where uh, putting a stop loss behind the moving averages is going to net you a pretty good result most of the time, especially when a trend is moving up. So when for those of you who are wondering, up, yeah, yeah if, for those of you who are wondering, how would I have joined this, um, you know, move up had I you know, missed the initial break? Well, every time it comes down and gets close to the 20, off you go. Uh, and you can see here that the, the, the 50 uh, was not breached once uh, in this entire trend. And even now that it looks like it's come to a, a bit of a close or a bit of a consolidation period, uh, the moving average, which is the 20, which is the red one, is still holding price action at bay at the moment. So even though we would be looking you know, definitely at the point where, well, you know, this trend is probably slowing down, it's a very, very good example of how strong that moving average can be as a, pot a potential stop loss. Here we've just got the Australian dollar, just thought I'd bring this one up. Um, nothing really in particular that we're looking at, but when that break did happen, you'll notice that the 50 was the, the one for this, and then now it's it's found that consolidation, and really this is quite an important point. It breaks through here. Um, it could be you know going back up and testing kind of you know, the higher points, because this is really forming that, that bottom. You've got the bottom, test of the bottom, potential consolidation coming in all of a sudden you've got that moving average kind of switch that's happened here and now we're starting to look towards maybe even the buy side but if you were to get into this trade let's say you were to buy to the upside potentially what you'd be looking at is well where do we think the stop loss might be behind the last swing would be a safe point uh, or safer point to put it so and you always do that by working out you know does it make sense what am i seeing what's the price action doing uh, what's the swing doing, what are the moving averages telling me. You put all these things together and you build that system and you build a place for your stop losses to be. And then you build where's my take profits going to be. So maybe you say, okay, well, I think the distance of this makes a lot of sense. You work that out. You work that out by basically taking the range. You then work that range out. And then you see, okay, well, on my line chart, are there support resistances around this level? few things that are happening here Tyron and I would be big proponents of this because things like the um, the 200 moving average would probably be there if it was quite aggressive and at the same time well guess what it's a psychological number it's right around the 70 cents for the Australians so it's a lot of things that go into this stuff obviously you want to be paying attention but you can see that if you follow trends by following the swings and then locking in the new uh, behind as it as it makes new lows you will generally have more success and, and most traders don't do that a lot of traders do yeah. not follow trends uh, that's that way. right and hopefully look everybody can see why uh, a stop loss where we've marked it there would be such a sensible approach on this particular trade because at the end of the day if, if this does come back and touch your stop loss it's meant that it's made a, a new low at a consolidation area, which generally probably indicates that it's actually going to go all the way to the bottom again. So why would you have your stop loss any bigger? Because if, if this area is breached, there's a very, very good chance it's going to go all the way to the bottom. So all that's going to do is actually yeah, reduce the size of the lot that you're trading because your stop loss is too big and you're going to get stopped anyway. You've got to remember that yeah, a stop loss is in place, one, to protect uh, obviously your position, but also uh, to indicate it's generally going to be um, is a level where your trade is probably going to fail. It's not there just to it's it's not there just to protect your account. A stop loss is placed at a place where if it's hit, more than likely the setup that you've been looking at is going to fail. 
and that is the first failure point. If it does breach that level, that's the part where you would expect this trade to fail. So there's no need to give it any more room because if that level is reached, the trade is yeah. more than likely going to be over. So just a couple of little tips there. When you're take, uh, setting take profit areas, try not to break even trades with fixed pip amounts. So don't don't fall into that trap again where you just say 50, 50 pips up and I'm breaking even the trade. We all do that. Try not to. Use percentages instead. If you expected 80 pips, if it, the trade gets to, I don't know, 70% of what you expect, maybe that's a great point to break even it. You can see already that breaking things down to percentages is a really big key because it keeps your trading more consistent. By having a fixed pip, you're not really taking uh, into account what the market's doing. Obviously, you want to learn the way the market moves and, of course, set take profit zones around your planned area. So you need to be flexible. You need to say, okay, if it gets into my zone, I'm going to set maybe a mobile alert or an email alert. When it gets to my zone, I have a look at the market and I monitor the market. That's a very good top tip. You don't want to just say, I'm going to take this price and this price only, because <laughs> what if you see it happen on the daily, it hits your take profit zone. Um, then on the four hour or one hour time frame, you see a double top and you're on the buy side. All of a sudden a double top happens, it breaks the neckline in your zone and you're like, you should keep holding it, and it goes all the way back down to zero and break even to you. It's not ideal. It's definitely not, not what you all. want. And the key, the key to tonight, probably the word, the takeaway word, if you want to take away word from tonight's webinar, is dynamic. Okay, you need to be dynamic if you take profits and you stop losses. And using percentages instead of fixed uh, pips or fixed dollar amounts actually makes you dynamic. Because if you're using a percentage-based system, it means that you're working out a percentage of the actual price move. So you're factoring in the volatility, the momentum. All of that is being factored in when you're putting in your take profits and stop losses. But just as importantly, you're also using um, support and resistance as a guide. So that's really, really important because that's what that's making you agile with what the market is actually doing rather than being rigid and having those fixed levels that inevitably will get broken when in a market especially that is proving to be a little bit volatile. We won't touch on role reversal too much tonight, but very important concept if you're not familiar with it to learn where resistance becomes support or support becomes resistance. Here's just an example in the market. Now, one thing that I think everyone's starting to get probably the... Um, I guess into the into the idea of what we're talking about is that this resistance became support when this when this high is taken out do we think that this support underneath this support is going to be very strong stop loss level yes it is it's going to be a very strong stop loss level and that's due to a multitude of factors one we know the market respected this level it respected it again so what makes you think that this market level is going to be broken easily? It's going to be very difficult for it to break. And therefore, it's the key kind of area where you would love to place stop losses. So very, very good technical there. Uh, step three, market conditions. Always important for you to understand news events and things. News events can stop or take, they can hit you take profits. And often if you're following trends, it'll actually be more beneficial official than you think a lot of news but they can be very detrimental to scalping stop losses so always be very very um, careful about that and practice discipline and of course if you're holding trades over the weekend like we saw into the Australian election a few weeks ago uh, we saw some gapping happen on Monday due to the I guess not expected result uh, and that can happen so you always need to be aware of that okay a couple of quick tips and tricks uh, just before we end up tonight and do a bit of Q&A. Um, if, if you have questions, by the way, please feel free to put them in the questions room now and we'll see if we can answer one or two at the end. Uh, so five tips and tricks that'll help you better analyze the chart. So one is using top-down approach. So what that means is if you're trading a 15-minute chart, please start looking at the daily, start looking at the four hour, start looking at the one hour, and then um, make a bit of a bias or maybe trend there and understand what's happening on those bigger time frames and where the support resistances are, and maybe if there's any patterns um, on those time frames so that you can better scalp the small one. Use lines, bars, and char and uh, lines charts, bar charts, and candlestick charts. They all have a great purpose. We've done a few webinars on why. And of course, you want to be considering uh, who else might be taking your trades and when they will be taking them. So like we said with that Adam and Eve double bottom, we saw the cross of the moving average after we would probably have been in the trade. And what that means is that we know other traders are joining us for the journey. 
and that's what we want. We want actually, contrary to belief, uh, popular belief, it, we actually want people to be putting their money where um, in the market in in our direction. We want them to be we want to be in cheap, and then they want to pay too much. But we still want them to be there. We need them to push the market to the direction we need it to be, and they have to join us. And why may they be joining us? Very important to understand. And of course, using confirmation signals to enter the charts, not just your own um, analysis levels. So I won't st step on this one too much tonight because it is more about stop losses and take profits. But do remember, you want to create a business plan or a trading system strategy uh, and that you can keep consistent. We like to use points based. Uh, we use a system called Presic in our course. So if you're interested in that course, you can always visit uh, www.fxevolution.com and have a look at our, our courses. But Presic is basically based on price action, risk management, ELD, chart patterns, indicators, and charting techniques. And, and we believe that you should be using at least one, or one of each one of these uh, letters here before placing a trade. You really want to have a good idea of many different reasons why you're in the trade and many different, um, I guess, methods so that when someone, when you do get in there, you've got the highest probability possible. Ty, do you have anything else to say on that one? I mean, obviously, we we love using it. I think you might be answering one of the questions, but that's okay. Uh, so if we have any q and A, I I think I've got a question here from John and he just asks, uh, when I'm placing stop loss levels and I'm using patterns, uh, do I always have to follow uh, where the pattern stop losses are? Because sometimes some of them don't, I guess what he's saying is sometimes some of them don't make sense to the pattern. Uh, okay, I get what you mean. But let's bring up this cheat sheet again, just go through it. So. One thing with patterns is sometimes, you know, flags, pennants, those kind of things, they always have a very good risk reward. Uh, sometimes double bottoms do not have as good a risk reward. The reward is the same as the stop loss in this case. So it's more of a one to one type of trade. As we mentioned before, if you see a pull where it pulls up and it swings before or creates maybe a flag in here and then breaks, you can always put that stop loss underneath here. It's less conservative. It's not going to be as high probability, but it is going to be a good place. So that's definitely going to be something that you can work on there, John. Got a few other questions here. Uh, what are the value of the moving averages? Uh, 20 and 50 are great moving averages that you should use, and 200. I've got a question here from Lee, quite a large one. Um, He says, okay, I have an issue with taking profits. So many traders advise to let your winners run. I try to let winners run and continuously watch my profits fall away. How can I reconcile this? Man, that's that's not good, Ali, but it's very common. Letting your winners run, I don't think that's necessarily the best advice. Um, the, the, the reason why is that you want to be able to trade it like a business and you want to know okay if patterns are great because a pattern is saying here's where my stop loss needs to be here's where my take profit needs to be if you i think let it your winners run has really happened from things like run-ups like in bitcoin obviously in the stock market um, people sometimes buy a shareholder for 30 years and it just keeps going and they have great success there but if you want to trade the currency markets where they're constantly changing values and reserve banks are changing the way that 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 market is i think the easiest way to really look at it is if you look at let's say the australian dollar you put it on a monthly chart and you say okay i'm going to let my winners run now let's just say i was buying here and i let it run and i let it run for 10 years okay think about where it is right now and it's come back to the exact same point so that's kind of the analogy I like to use with, with currency is that there really isn't a fair value for currency. You need to be nimble and you need to be in and out. So what I would say is you really should learn Lee, more about patterns 
and start to focus more on support resistance levels. And if you're having a problem, maybe if you're trading the smaller time frame, start to look at support resistance levels on four hours, dailies and weeklies. That'll help you quite a lot because then you'll be able to see what the big traders do and where the big traders place um, their take profits and stop loss zones. So I hope that helps. All right, guys, now what we've got, um, we've actually run out of time on this one, but we are actually running our, our own webinar, uh, analyzing the market live uh, at 8.30, so starting um, shortly. So I've actually pasted the, the login information in the window. So if anybody's interested in actually joining us um, in the next hour or so, if you've got actually nothing better to do, but uh, look at the live markets, we're going to apply some of the processes that we were talking about tonight and also yeah, go through a lot of the rules that we follow. Yeah, feel free to, to register on that link and um, yeah, we'll be pretty much kicking that one and off straight after this one. So it might be a good opportunity to see what's happening live in the markets and yeah, having our opinion of yeah, what's actually going on and how we could look for some potential trades. All right, guys, we may see you in 10 minutes. Uh, otherwise, we'll see everybody in two two weeks, I believe, yeah, Tyrone. I think we're back on the Wednesdays, which would be awesome. We are. And you'll, yeah, we are. Yep. You'll see those... Uh, those emails out from Pepperstone. We really look forward to getting into some of those topics. They're going to be great. And uh, yeah, we hope everyone enjoyed and happy trading and good trading for the next couple of weeks. Great. Or, and don't forget, we'll guys. <laughs> absolutely. And don't forget also, if you have any um, questions or queries that you'd like us to maybe cover in future webinars, feel free to uh, send it to uh, support or your account advisor at Pepperstone and they'll pass on that information to us. So we'll try and tailor the webinars to really be specific to what people are, are looking for. So if you have any questions or um, any ideas that you'd like to cover in a webinar, you let your Pepperstone advisors know and um, yeah, they'll get passed on to us and we'll try and tailor them in the coming weeks. We really love feedback. It's it's great. So thanks very much, guys. Uh, have a very great evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Good night.